Hello, students. We're going to talk about uh, section 12.3 of your textbook, which is figuring out how we go about finding the order of reactions and the rate constant. So let's review what we did last time. I'm going to select a different colored pen now. Okay, so last time in our video lecture, we talked about how the rate of a reaction equals the change in concentration over the change in time. And this particular generic view would be based on A decomposing into B. And the other thing that we talked about was how we can determine what's called a rate law expression. Where rate equals a rate constant times the concentration raised to an exponent or order. Now, one of the most important things that we're going to need for the next part is to remember some of the relationships we talked about in the last video, which is the following, that there's three common orders. So there's first order, second order, and zero order. And that the orders are this exponent, which essentially will show the, how the rate is dependent on concentration. So in a first order reaction, if we double, the concentration of A is doubled, then 2 to the 1 is 2, so the rate will increase 2 times. Okay. And for a second order, our exponent is 2. In a second order reaction, if we double A, 2 squared is 4. So we'll see an increase in the rate 4 times. Whereas for first order, we see an increase in the rate two times. And I didn't write in here the rate equals. Okay. All right. And for a zero order reaction, rate will equal K times A to the zero, which is essentially one, correct? So, um, if A is doubled, there's no change in the rate. Okay, a couple of important pieces here is that these are common orders for second and zero. As I described earlier, the Orders can be negative, they can be fractional, but these are the most common ones that we start off with in this course. Um, now the question will be, how do we figure out what order it is? And for this, we're going to need data. So we cannot, we cannot look at a balanced equation and figure out the order. We need kinetics data. And that's what we're going to focus on. From data, we're going to do two different styles of techniques. One will be methods of initial rate. That's what this section 12.3 is about. And then we're going to do integrated rate law, which is for next week's video lecture on 12.4. Okay, so from data, these are going to be our two techniques that we're going to figure out how to find these orders of reaction. Now, why is order important? One of the things to consider is that the order of reaction uh, gives us a lot of information about the rate and how it's going to be affected by changes in an experiment. Uh, we talked about in the last video lecture how biochemists use this. And as we continue forward and 
you know, complete the unit on kinetics. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, one other thing is K. K is a rate constant. It's temperature dependent. And there is a section that we do after integrated rate law that we describe the factors that affect K. Now, the other part to consider is that if we have a rate law where we know K and we know the orders, then the rate law expression allows us to predict what's going to happen to the rate, even when we haven't done a particular concentration. So a good analogy for this will be is in Chem 200, you learned how to graph and you did a lot with straight line equations and you use them to predict hey, I have x, I want to know what y is, but and if you have the equation of the line, then you can do that. The rate law expression is similar, that if I were to know k, if I know the con concentration and I have the order, for sure I can solve for the rate. So the rate law expression is very powerful in terms of being able to predict the rate of a reaction. One last piece is that because K is temperature dependent, then all the data that you're given will have a temperature given. You won't do anything with that temp. It's not part of the calculations, but they wanna be thorough. You know, they wanna be thorough. So they're gonna give you that temperature because the data that you're given applies at that particular temperature. Okay, so our strategy of methods of initial rate, uh, this is the written form, and I, I think I'm going to click, you can come back to this slide, this would be the written out part of what I'm going to verbally say. So let's take a look at some data, and then uh, everything I say on the next slide is written down here. Here's our data, and there's a lot going on, but what I want you to notice is for methods of initial rate, they all kind of have the same look. And what it's going to be is there's going to be a series of experiments. And each experiment will have different concentrations of A and B. And here we're assuming then that this is like this, and we're trying to find the orders for A and for B. M and N are just generic orders. We don't know them yet, so we're going to try to find them. Okay, here's the strategy of methods of initial rate. You are going to look at each experiment or trial or run, depending on how they call it, and you're going to compare the experiments. So in trial or experiment one, you had an initial concentration of A as 2.50 times 10 to the negative 2. B was 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2. And then here was the rate, initial rate, that was determined for that, those initial concentrations. Okay, now let's analyze experiment 2. Here's the numbers for experiment 2. Okay, take a minute to look at how experiment two is different than experiment one. You can pause me, but try to figure it out by looking at the numbers. Okay, now what you're seeing is, notice the concentration of B between run one and two is the same. So this will be our strategy for methods of initial rate is you want to set up an experiment where one of the reactants concentrations is the same from one trial to the other. This will allow us to see how changing A affects the rate. So let's see what I mean by that. A from run one and two goes from 2.50 times 10 to the negative two to 5.00 times 10 to the negative two. That's doubled, right? If you can't see that that's doubled, you take the bigger number divided by the smaller. And now I'm going to ask the question, well, if we doubled A, what happened to the rate? 
So now we go over here to the rate. And if you look, we take 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3 and divide it by 1.75 times 10 to the negative 3. And what we see there is that that one doubled. Okay, so let's think about what that will mean. That's going to mean that rate equals k a to the first order. So we conclude that it's first order based on the data there, where the A doubles, the rate doubles. OK, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the data, and we're going to look for runs where a stays the same and B changes. Okay, so where A stays the same and B changes. So I'm going to highlight that in yellow, I think. Okay, I did do it. Oh, that's not going to work. Oh, I know why. Sorry, guys. Sometimes I do these weird things with this. Okay, so let's do highlighter. So here, A in run one is 2.50 times 10 to the negative two. And in run three, it's, you notice it's the same. Okay, I'm gonna switch color pens. I guess we'll do blue. So from one, run one, oops. This makes it feel like it's more in class where not, everything's not so perfect, I think. Um, Okay, so run one and three, those are the same. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to run uh, or concentration B and see what is changing there. So hoping to get our pen. Okay, so let's hope this is the pen, yay, okay. So notice from run experiment one to three, B has now doubled. Now, if there's too much going on with that purple, I can erase it. So the nice thing about this is you can rewind. You need to rewind it, right? Okay, so now we see that in experiment one to three, B has doubled and A has stayed the same. So now let's look what happens to the rate. You'll take 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3 and divide by 1.75 times 10 to the negative 3, and that also doubled. So I can conclude, right, because if the concentration doubles and the rate doubles, based on our review, we would conclude that it's first order. OK. So this is what I would call eyeballing. And in a minute, we're going to take a look at what we would do if we couldn't eyeball it. But I'm going to tell you that once we go through that process, you're going to, you're going to want to do it this more simplified way. OK, now, how do we find K? Take a look at this data. Put me on pause and think about how we would go about finding K with all this data. Okay, so what we would do is we could pick any experiment we want and just plug in to our rate law expression. So if we notice, I'm going to write over here, K equals rate over the concentration of A to the first order concentration of B to the first order based on our conclusions. I can pick any experiment that I want to plug in to solve for K. In textbook data, that's perfect. Any of the experimental runs will give us the same K or very, very close. Things would be different in a lab setting, but any of the runs uh, would be fine. So obviously, nine times out of 10, a student will pick experiment number one, just as it's the first one. 
So I'm going to say k, the rate constant, equals the rate. Is it OK if I do the moles, molarity over seconds in this way, which is the same? That's the same as m, big M, seconds to the minus 1. I just think it's cleaner. A is 2.50 times 10 to the negative 2 molar to the first power. And B will be 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity to the first power. Okay, so take a moment to put me on pause and plug that into your calculators. I got 2.k equals 2.33. Uh, everything here has three sig figs. Please note that, let's say my data has 3.00 times 10 to the negative 2, that I'm writing those significant zeros and I'm not dropping them. So make sure it works not sloppy. You know, you, you don't want to drop these zeros that they give you in a problem. That's three sig figs. Okay, so 2.33 is what I get. Now, what I want you to do is to take a look at the units for K. So this molarity cancels with that one, and then this other one stays, right? So we have seconds is inverse, so it's going to come down here. So essentially what we have is 1 over molarity seconds. I don't really like that, right? So I'm hoping that you would rewrite this as 2.33 molarity to the negative 1 seconds to the negative 1. Okay, now the units for K reflect the overall order. So the overall order here is 1 times 1, which for exponents, is adding them, so this is overall second order. Any reaction that's overall second order will have those units. Okay, and so you can tell a lot about a reaction by looking at what the order for K is. I'm sorry, what the units for K it are, because those will tell us what order the reaction is. So if you see molarity of the negative one second to the negative one, you know that that was an overall second order reaction. You wouldn't know the individual ones, but you would know overall what the order is. So now I'm going to write this as sort of my final overall work. And here's our wonderful rate law expression. Rate equals 2.33 with the units for k times a to the first power, b to the first order. So we have our overall reaction rate. Notice that we could use this if we wanted to plug in any values for a and b not given to find the rate. Okay, But this data is for this experiment at whatever temperature they ran it at. So it's very specific. OK, well, that was fun. And um, I just had written this out to give myself more room to write, but I had enough room on the last slide. So I'm just going to click again. It's the same data. OK, now, um, actually, before I scare you, I think I will go back. Okay, now let's say that you don't like to eyeball, which was, what did I mean by that? You know, looking at the numbers that these are the same and this doubled and then this doubled. Okay, I personally believe that's the way you have to do it. It just makes it easier. But let's say you, you're struggling to figure out the relationships or your data is not perfect. And when data is not perfect from real experiments, then we may need this, what I call the long route, which is described 
in the next slide. Let me show you what we would do for the long route. I would take experiment one and two, and I would set it up as a comparison or ratio. Um, I could do this. I could compare run one to two or two to one. Normally, we'd go with the um, two to one because this number got bigger. But so it, it won't matter, though. So let's say I'm going to compare rate two to rate one in that experiment. So this would be if we, we don't know that it was first order for each. And we're trying to do it more officially, I guess you'd say. Okay, so I'm looking at this. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the actual numbers. So I'm going to say one point, or sorry, rate two is 3.50 times 10 to the negative 3. Rate 1 is 1 1.75 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, our k's are the same. They're a constant. A in run 2 is 5.00 times 10 to the negative 2. So I'm plugging in the values. And remember, M and N are just generic because we don't know the order. OK, now notice what will happen is the B's cancel concentration because those are the same number. OK, so now I have an expression, and I want to solve for M. And here is the math rule for logs. That we want to get this exponent out. So I would have to take the log of both sides. And it's going to look like this. Now, I'll write it out, but that's just two. Okay, I have to pull that logarithm out. I'm going to switch colors just to make it more dramatic. Or pull that exponent out, not logarithm. Pull that exponent out. Now, hopefully you're saying, wow, it was so much easier the way Paula did it the first time. Okay, and those are those were molarities, the units cancel out. Okay, so I would then solve for M. Okay, this would be the log of two divided by the log of two, right? So M equals one. So you'd have to bring, right, divide the left side by the log of 5.00 times 10 to the negative 2 over 2.50 times 10 to the negative 2, which is essentially 2, correct? So uh, we get the same result. We got that with respect to A, our order is first order. And then you could do the same thing for B. But I do recommend doing the first route that I showed you, which is more simple. But this would be useful if you can't figure it out, or B, your data isn't so perfect that it's harder to eyeball and the orders didn't come out exactly on 0, 1, and 2. OK, so here's the PowerPoint way of showing it. Same thing. Okay. 
All right, so pause me for a second and take a look at this data and try this problem before I go over it with you. And in this case, we want to figure out the order with respect to oxygen and NO. So go ahead and pause me and take a look. Okay, so let's start by comparing experiment one to two. We don't, it, we won't always have to do that and there's flexibility, but what you're trying to find are runs where the concentration stays the same and the other changes. So like here, this concentration of NO stays the same. The O2 changes, that guy doubled. And now we're gonna come over here and see what happened to the rate. Now, if you plug that into your calculators, you're gonna get 1.99. And that's going to be close enough to say that that doubled. Okay, um, you've seen instances where you, you kind of have that gut feeling of when you can round like that. Like if it was 1.5, that would not be round, you know, you couldn't round a 1.5. And in that case, that's when I would go and do the long route. But here we see that we're at 1.99. We can have confidence to round that to two. So with respect to the oxygen, we know that we can conclude because the concentration doubled and the rate doubled, then it is first order. Okay, now take a moment and pause me and find runs where O2 stays the same. So that would be, here's, oops, oh, I guess it's a blue highlighter. Okay, so here runs one and three, the oxygen stays the same. So now let's look to see what happens to the NO. So I'm gonna erase the crossed out part there. Okay, so we went from 1.30 times 10 to the negative 2 to 2.60 times 10 to the negative 2. That's two times, right? So doubled. Now let's go over here and find how the rate changes. Now in this case, maybe you can look at that and say that is four times change. But if you can't, then you're going to take your number there the 12.8 times 10 to the negative three and divide it by run number one. I think we might get 3.99. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so we get 3.99, which is four times. So the concentration doubled, but the rate went up four times. We can conclude that it's second order for the NO. Okay. Now let's go through and find K. I can pick any run that I want. I'll just do the first one. I'm going to say K equals the rate. And I'm going to do molarity set in verse seconds versus writing out the molarity. I find that so messy. And when I'm writing these numbers, I'm not going to drop significant zeros and I want to put I kind of messed up there because I didn't leave room for my unit okay so go ahead and plug that into your calculator. Don't forget to square that bottom concentration. So 
So I get K, so kind of, a, it's a bigger number, right? K, et cetera, so it's a big number. Now let's talk six figs, right? Our concentrations have three, our, our rate has three, so we're gonna round this to three sig figs. So to three sig figs, this would be 1.73 times 10 to the one, two, three. And then let's talk about the units there. So the unit, let's cross off this molarity with this one. Now the unit right now would be one over molarity squared seconds. So let's rewrite that though. K will equal 1.73 times 10 to the three, molarity to the negative two seconds to the negative one. Now notice the units changed for K because this is no longer overall second order like the last one. What is the overall order now? It's third order, so it's overall third order. And so these are the units for an overall third order reaction. And then my final rate law, all nice and pretty with everything. I've included all the reactants, the, the orders, the units for K and the number for K. So this will allow us then to predict the rate when we change those concentrations. Now, one other thing I think it's worth noting is that the last K from the previous question was 2.3. Here, we have a very, very big K in comparison. So the rate constants are different for each reaction and they are temperature dependent. So all of this is from data. This one didn't show what temp this was where I'm at, but they're temperature dependent. And keep in mind, something that we'll keep talking about is the bigger K is, the greater the rate. So the reaction's gonna be faster. Okay, and if you needed to, you can work this out using the comparison with the logarithms, but I just really want you to not do that unless you absolutely have to. Um, usually in a big class of 48 students on a quiz, maybe one or two does that official process um, the longer route, but uh, I'm highly encouraging you to be able to eyeball them and again, the only time that you might not be able to is if there's something unusual about the data. Okay, so that solves it. You can go through those more slowly. I won't go through those. But here, they came out with the same answer using the long route. Okay, so this one I'm going to click on because we're going to do this one during class. So the one that I just clicked very quickly on, we're going to do during our um, Zoom discussion on Monday. And so um, you will find that particular question in the in-class questions or what I call Zoom discussion questions. And I'll talk more about that as we progress. Um, but let's finish this particular lecture with uh, table 16.3. Um, what this deals with is finding the units of K are determined by the order the reaction is. So we just did two of them. If you notice, and I, I'm going to write these a little bit differently. We just did a reaction that was overall third order, and we found that the unit for K ended up being molarity to the negative two seconds to the negative one, which is what this big mess is shown here. Okay, those are the same. For second order overall, uh, the unit 
was molarity of the negative one second to the negative one. Okay, now let's take a, a, a first order reaction pretty quick and I can show you why that's the unit. So here we have a first order. K will equal rate over Okay, so rates usually are molarity seconds, right? And then the concentration molarity. So if you notice, if it's first order, look closely what will happen. The molarities will cancel, right? And we'll get one over seconds or seconds to the minus one. So that's why the unit for first order is seconds to the minus one. Okay, if a reaction rate is zero order, then any number to the zero power is one. So the unit for K is the unit for the rate. And the rates units are molarity seconds per second. So molarity seconds to the minus one. Okay, so notice the rate unit is molarity per second, which is molarity seconds to the minus one. So what does this mean is that if you see a value for K, it will always have the units. So units in this chapter are important. Okay, and those units are important. So um, they, if you're given a value for K, pay attention to the units because you're gonna know from the units what the overall reaction order is for the overall process. Okay, so K's units are derived from the overall order of reaction.